Most people are familiar with the moon, stars, and planets that can be seen on any clear night. If you look long enough, you'll even see occasional meteors streaking across the sky, especially if you can get far away from the glare of city lights. But a few times in your life, you might get to see something truly strange and beautiful. I'm talking about comets. This video will give you a basic introduction of these mysterious visitors. Anyone who has seen a bright comet remembers it as one of nature's great spectacles, but may wonder what it was, why did it appear, and what did it mean? Ancient people saw comets as great omens of some major event, either good or bad. Modern science gives us a clearer picture of the true nature of these objects. Comets originally come from the outermost part of the solar system. Far beyond the outer planets and the Kuiper belt lies the Oort cloud, a huge spherical region containing countless small icy objects probably left over from the formation of our solar system over four billion years ago. As long as they remain in the Oort cloud, these objects remain frozen and far too remote to be seen from Earth. Over time, though, many of these objects will be affected by the gravity of, or collisions with, other objects and can fall sunward. If they get close enough to the sun, they become a comet. The basic comet has two parts, the head and the tail. The head contains the small main solid mass called the nucleus and a large region of vaporized material surrounding the nucleus called the coma. The tail, if it forms, is pushed by the solar wind in the direction away from the sun. It is mostly composed of dust and charged particles called ions. Robotic spacecraft have given us our first close-up views of some comet nuclei, two of which are shown here. As you can see, they are not large enough to be made spherical by their own gravity, yet even these small objects show the scars of crater impacts. Comets have been described as dirty snowballs. They are made of various ices, including water ice, dust, some rocky material, and various chemical compounds. As they approach the sun, any volatile materials begin to vaporize, ejecting dust and vapor into the space around the comet. Most comets have very elongated elliptical orbits, much different from the nearly circular orbits of the planets. They may pass very close to the sun at one end of their orbit, and then spend decades or even centuries traveling far beyond Neptune's orbit to the other end. Their orbital speed is fastest near the Sun and much slower far away from the Sun. Because of this, their time in the inner solar system is very brief. It is during those brief periods near the Sun that things get interesting. The heat of the Sun causes rapid vaporization of the volatile parts of the nucleus. Sometimes, the nucleus may even partially explode or split into smaller pieces. Soon, the nucleus develops a coma. The coma is essentially a loosely held atmosphere made of dust, vapor, and charged ions. A typical nucleus is less than 10 miles across, but the coma can easily be thousands of miles across. Then, if the comet gets even closer to the sun, the solar wind pushes the coma away from the nucleus, forming a tail opposite the sun. Some comets show very little tail, but a few have tails extending millions of miles. This diagram shows the appearance and direction of the tail as a comet swings near the sun. Some comets show two tails, an ion tail driven by charged particles from the sun, and a slower dust tail driven by the solar wind. As the comet moves farther from the sun, the tail and coma eventually disappear. Each comet is unique, and they are notoriously hard to predict. This was a bright comet with the shorter dust tail in the same direction as the bluish ion tail. This is comet hale -Bopp, the best comet of the 1990s, it shows a clear separation between the dust and ion tails. By the way, most comets are named after their discoverers. In this case, Thomas Hale and Thomas Bopp both independently discovered this comet on the same night. 
This comet showed a prominent ion tail and only a very faint dust tail. As I said, each comet is unique. That's part of the fun of observing comets. In photographs, comets and meteors appear similar, but meteors are only visible for a second or two as they streak across the sky, while comets may be visible for many days, as shown in this diagram. Also, meteors are small events happening in our own atmosphere, while comets are generally seen, well, many millions of miles from the Earth. Sometimes comets, called sun grazers, pass so close to the sun that they become completely vaporized. Solar observing satellites regularly watch the last moments of these comets. By the way, comets are so small that this has no noticeable effect on our sun. So keep watching the night sky. Someday you'll get to see your own once-in-a-lifetime comet.